what I'm gaming. What's in the bag? Let's start at the top end. I got the trusty TSR. I've played the TSR ever since it came out. TSR 3 for me. Um, I also combine that with a 10 degree head set at A1. So pretty standard setting. Find the 10 degree head is necessary for me because I'm a relatively low spin player, particularly as I'm losing sw uh, swing speed as I'm uh, aging. Oddly enough though, I play the Tour AD Graphite Design VF6 in an X-Flex, a swing speed at around the 105 to 110 miles an hour, depending on how warmed up and how ready to play I am physically. And so this shaft is relatively butt stiff, medium, tip, uh, medium stiffness through the middle and tip stiff down the bottom. So the shaft itself might indicate it's a um, shaft that's good for low spin, but for me, the reason I choose this shaft is through the bottom of the swing arc, given its tip profile, it does not want to kick forward very much. And more importantly than that, it doesn't want to toe deflect very much, which is the bending of the shaft downwards. Because the last thing I want is a contact location that's moving from somewhere in the center to the high toe, because that spells right or it's, that spells a pretty quick uh, kind of quack hook based on the gear effect. So I know my miss out here is on the toe and I want the shaft to support movement of that contact location back towards the center. So that's why I pick uh, that one. So that's the driver. Then uh, in the fairway wood range, I then drop down to the TSR2 and the TSR2 is necessary because I, I want the three wood to perform a job that is very similar both off tees and off fairways and that's high launch and relatively low spin. So if I went the TSR3, when I'm hitting a ball off the ground, because of the CG location and the depth in the face, I would tend to hit more spinning shots. And so I want the CG down low, so that's why the TSR2 is a really important club for me, such that when I'm hitting off the ground, I still get the launch. I still don't spin it up all that much based on the head loft and shaft combination. It's a, a Rogue 70 gram uh, TX, the 130 MSI. Um, so off the ground, I can still get high launch and good carry. And then importantly as well, um, I like this off the tee uh, the TSR for me doesn't tend to approach that driver ball speed, club head speed clearly based on it being three wood at 15 degrees of loft. But also sometimes pe what people complain about is their three wood goes too close when they're hitting off the tee um, to, um, to their driver. And then the shaft tends to, to off the tee spin it enough for me to where I don't face that problem. I don't get 25, 2700 RPM with this particular shaft. I get closer to the 34, 3500 RPM. So um, fitting is an, an elaborate, um, kind of sequence of things that you kind of mix and match and um, there's clearly some high level knowledge that goes into fitting and if you haven't had it done I strongly recommend it. So that's the uh, two clubs at the top end. I've got a relatively old hybrid uh, that I got the Tour ID graphite design in. It's uh, the old H2 uh, set at A1. Uh, it's uh, 21 degrees. I sometimes game this one most of the time in America but uh, Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I play a limited amount of golf these days. More often I'm practicing or demonstrating. But when I do play golf, most of the time it's consolidated in a very tight date window, which means a trip to the UK for the Scottish and the Open Championship. And so moreover, I'll be hitting a driving iron. So I'll um, leave the hybrid at home and I'll go to the T200 three iron. And now we get into the iron range. Throughout the entire iron range, I'm gaming the Project X 6.0. Um, oh, I forgot to mention also uh, the Superstroke grip, the black uh, Superstroke grip, best in the game uh, in terms of their longevity, even though I, I like to change them out. Uh, this one's a relatively new one and it feels super tacky. Um, it's not overly soft. I don't like an overly soft grip, but I also don't like even in any range of grips, the uh, cords because I tend to tear my hands since I'm not practicing uh, very much these days. So driving iron of choice. And then the irons of choice are the T100s. So Titleist T100s, fairly standard set makeup. I'm a half a degree flat lie angle, standard length, standard lofts. I need spin, I need launch, I don't need the S heads. Um, I'll take whatever ball speed uh, I'm given at whatever swing speed I'm creating for this, uh, for the age that I'm at. Um, and then uh, the, they're just like butter off the face, just so sweet off the face. So I've been playing Titleist forever and a day, it seems. So irons going all the way down to a pitching wedge. I play the T100 pitching wedge, whereas at a tour level, most of the time by pitching wedge, they're down into the Vokey 46. And the reason they're down into a Vokey 46 oftentimes is they want that similar feel off the face for those scoring clubs. 
I don't find there to be a big difference, but that's just my personal preference right there. But as we get down now into those wedges, um, Bob, uh, Voki, and Aaron Dill, they're so nice to uh, let me have the, um, the early release of the SM10s, even though they're now out to the market. I game a 5208 F grind, a 5614 F grind, and then my baby of all babies, aside from the putter, which you're about to see, so stay tuned for that one, is the 60T grind. It's four degrees of bounce. Uh, I've gamed a low bounce wedge forever and a day. I feel like this is my Swiss Army knife, and the lower the bounce that I have, it gives me much more versatility than if I had a high bounce wedge. High bounce um, acts like water wings or uh, floaties for swimmers. Yes, they're gonna help you not drown, but they certainly curtail the speed and the types of strokes you can swing with. Same thing with bounce on wedges for me, and also as a principle of teaching. So when I'm working with a player and developing their skill, particularly with this, uh, this lob wedge, the most lofted wedge in their bag, will generally progress as we develop more skills for landing precisely and creating different types of lofts into a low bounce wedge, no matter the turf condition. So we can be sandy, we can be wet, we can be Bermuda, we can be rye, we can be bent, any of those, if you've got the right types of techniques, then this can be your Swiss Army knife. So four degrees of bounce is super important for me. And as a last point of importance is, despite the lack of, let's say, playing that I do, I practice enough to where I like fresh grooves. And so every six to maybe 10 weeks, I'll ask for, a, or I'll order um, some new wedges, particularly in this 60, because it gets worn out pretty quick, given the sensitivity of the metal to the sheer effect of the golf ball and the cutting through the turf, right? So those grooves wear out pretty quick, and when they wear out, you'll get some, what I'll call some fruit roll-ups, balls that launch higher than they should and spin less than they should, and that's not good for controlling the scoring clubs. So make sure you're uh, freshening up your wedges. Okay, now to the baby. You ready for it? We got the 009 blacked out across the board, top to bottom. We got stability one BGT. What does this do for me? Um, so I guess there's an innovation in the industry these days. It's upgrading from steel shafts into um, sometimes mixed material shafts. So this BGT stability one, uh, the tour spec is a uniform, so it looks the same. It's, um, there are varieties of this, but this particular one is just a constant taper down as the head. So when I'm looking down, I'm not, I don't have an obstructed view into steps in the shaft, but particularly how this helps me is it's reducing any chance that over torque or over flex in the shaft is gonna produce different face angles and impacts. So it helps me be really consistent with delivery of face angle and just as consistent as anything else. In fact, probably more consistent with my touch control. So the feedback up the shaft is not even though it might be stiff and low torque, its torque value is 1.0, where generally you're talking in the two to three range for most other shafts that are out there on the market. Um, this one particularly allows the feedback up the shaft that tells me the amount of force that I apply to the golf ball through the head. And then this one's unique, I think. I've got a Super Stroke Flatso 1.0, and I've got the grip, the flat side of the grip, parallel to the leading edge of the club face, so to the, um, the direction I want the ball to travel. And for me, that gives me some sort of tactile sense, some sort of feeling sense that whether I put conventional lead hand low or claw, I'm a claw these days, is I just try and keep that flat of the grip, always looking at the target because I want my stroke to perform and I want to minimize rotation in the stroke and off plane action in the club head so the path is fairly linear. There's a soft arc to it. And then the face is always perpendicular to that path that I'm swinging the club face on and then orienting my super stroke grip in this orientation helps me with that. And I guess the final point of importance is what ball might help me go out there and shoot low scores. And it's the Pro V1X. Red numbers are always sporting the Altus logo. I might send a few out into the weeds here and there, but I'm okay these being found. If you find one, leave a comment in the uh, messages below. Let me know where it was and where you're playing and, and what you shot. So that's a what's in the bag, just a little insight into the uh, tools and equipment uh, that, uh, that I have. Cheers.